This is Soul Acoustic. And yo, it's Broke Gamer. We're here. Um, that's, but, that's right. We are here. But it looks like uh, we're missing somebody on this one. Yeah, still uh, nothing from X Priest about being able to get on the mic. Apparently, yes. he's, uh, his voice is still just uh, just not not there yet. Uh, he, he I talked broke... to him for a bit earlier before recording, and it, it, uh, it definitely is not radio ready. <laughs> no, he, he broke his story. And if you if you listen closely to me, mine's kind of going too, actually. Yeah, it's just going around. <laughs> uh, I, I went to a service call for work, and I asked a lady about some bins that I had to take care of. And I was like, all right, I need to talk to your manager or somebody who knows about this. And she's like, half the building is gone. They all have the flu. And I yeah. was like, oh, okay, I guess something is going around right now. Yeah, no, definitely something's definitely going around. I've been sick like five or six times um like on and off like i'll get better and then it'll come back and like right now i was i was better a few days ago and now it's Mm -hmm. coming back if you listen like i said if you listen close to my voice it's kind of starting to go a little bit so i might there's a little something there yeah yeah yeah. so i'm gonna be calling in to work tomorrow (laughs) (laughs) not this guy yeah but anyway um so what's been going on man it has been a long time time also wait real quick sorry uh if you listen real closely too we probably sound different we probably sound super cool that's right mamma mia (laughs) (laughs) that's because in the in the very back we have our own phantom of the opera operating all of the buttons and the sounds uh x priest x priest is actually here with us he just uh he doesn't want to be on the mic yeah Uh, like i said he's not radio ready yet but he, he will be helping us record and he's helping us with all the other stuff. Yeah, he. Uh, but we have a new piece of equipment that we're using. Um, it's the Rode Procaster, I believe is what it's called. Um, wow. And it is brand spanking new, hot off the market, just came out, fresh out the oven, hot and ready, whatever you want to call it. And uh, it's tight. It's really, really cool. So Yeah, if you guys want to see what it looks like, just go on our Instagram <laughs> and have a look right there. Priest posted a picture of it. It looks pretty sweet. So, yeah, I can't wait to, to start recording with that more often. Rode better stop playing. Give us some money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, it's up. Hey, Rode, what's up? We <laughs> yeah. got your, your equipment yeah, here. we're using your equipment. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, so what's been going on, man? We've been, uh, we've been MIA for quite a while. Shoot, dude, the holidays hit me like a brick truck, man. Yeah. It was just uh, – it was heavy and it was unexpected. Um, lots of different parties that I had to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we, I, I celebrated four Christmases, I think this year, just because yeah, wow. of, uh, the, the different family members on my side and my, my girlfriend's side. Um, and then, you know, we had our, our friends holidays and we had new years and holiday schedule for work. So it was good that we took that break and, you know, it sucks that I couldn't make it on that last one before we went on break, but yeah, yeah. you guys were hitting me up and I was still at work. So I was getting up for work at, at like five and getting off of work at like six thirty. Man. Yeah. You were making that money, 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 money. Oh, yeah, dude. Those were some fat paychecks. They actually told me, they're like, you can't get that much more overtime anymore. Like, right now, you need to just chill out on the overtime. And I'm all like, you guys gave me the work. Just give me less work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, for me, um, it's just been being sick and uh, <laughs> doing shows and stuff. and A lot of um, shows. I've been seeing that you, you've you been yeah. posting where you've been at. Yeah, yeah. I've been been pretty busy in the music scene um i actually just got nominated for a sammy um, i saw that and the, i voted for you thank you uh yeah. it's the sacramento music awards i got nominated for a uh, singer songwriter i guess of the year i don't know how that you know what the full title would be um but yeah if you guys are uh, listening now you got 60 days or 59 days to vote <laughs> so <laughs> or actually by the time this releases 55 days to what vote what is it uh we are recording on the 13th yeah uh, so yeah just uh if, if you hear this within the window of that time go ahead and vote go for it yep just look uh, up the sammies just... and uh go to the top right hand corner there's a button that says vote now you register with your facebook or google or twitter yep. go down scroll down till you see singer songwriter and then you'll find my 
wonderful name, Chris Washington, in there. <laughs> For a second there, I thought that I wasn't going to be able to do it because I was like, oh, man, I don't want to have to sign up with anything. I just want to vote and go. But yeah. it didn't even take that long. You just one click, you're in. Yeah, you it vote. was like five seconds. Um, and if you have any other categories <laughs> that you know about as well, too, check those out. Vote for them, too, because you don't have to vote for everything. Just nope. vote for the things that you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've just been busy doing that. I'm working on uh, uh, putting a project together. Um, hopefully, hopefully to release sometime in February. We'll see. But obviously, with the way my uh, sick, my immune system is working out, it's not allowing me to get a lot, whole lot done. So. It's just this weather, man. It, yeah. it, it got cold. All of the stress of of the holidays. I'm sure that if you just uh, pull it back just a little bit and take a little break before uh, you get back into it, you'll be all right. Now yeah, the holidays over. Well, man, and I work outside too a lot. So that, yeah, that doesn't yeah, matter. that'll do it. Yeah. So. Yay, yay. So, yeah, that's what's been going on with us. Um, I guess we'll get into what you've been playing. Yo. We'd like to thank our listeners from iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and Podbean, and all podcast hosting sites. Thanks for listening to Ether Gamer Radio. So um, we are here. What you've been playing? Um, we are doing this show 100 percent live too. So let us know. That's what right. You guys We're think. just going through with We're it. We're getting it to going. <laughs> so um, uh, you want to start first? What you been playing? Yeah, me. Um, I have so a laundry we'll, we'll, list of games. <laughs> we will go backwards from where okay. we're at. As of today, because mm -hmm. I had a real good day today. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, I spent part of the day playing Mario Kart uh, Eight Deluxe. Just picked that up for the Switch uh, yesterday, and uh, I was playing Enter the Gungeon uh, with my friend Jordan. He, uh, he's he been a longtime friend since I was in high school, man. Like, we've known each other for a pretty long time, and he's kind of a world traveler. Like, he, uh, he's lived in a bunch of places, but we've always stayed in touch. And he usually, like, keeps me up on, on the hot titles and, you know, what's what uh, what's a good indie game. Um, most of the time, he's outside of, like, the, the, the first-person shooter meta or, like, the super hype games, but he also tracks, like, the, the really cool games, so... Yeah, that's what we were doing. We hung out. We uh, we went to this place called uh, Nash and Proper, which is a it's a food truck uh, that does Nashville uh, style wings and chicken and stuff like that. Uh, and then after that, that we got really some good. ice cream and played some video games, man. That's tight. Dang. Yeah. So uh, those two recently. <clears throat> um, so Mario Kart, no complaints. Mario Kart is as it should be. Uh, I was having some issues when I first played at your place because I was used to the handheld mode from the uh, the 2DS XL, mm -hmm. but. It rides smooth. Um, I like that it gives you the option to see all of the different stats of all of the different cars. Mm -hmm. um, but you can also make it as simple as what you look at is what you get. Um, and you also have the, uh, I didn't figure it out till later, but that antenna thing that sticks out the back, that's like the easy mode antenna. You, uh, you, you slap that sucker on and it's impossible for you to fall off the sides of a map. Obviously, oh. if you're not a good racer, you're you're still going to uh, uh, lose, but it definitely prevents you from getting timed out <laughs> by falling off. Okay. I didn't know what that was, actually. Yeah, I and I, I didn't know either, but I was trying to do some, you know, some weird tricks where I was trying to jump off the course to, to try and get, like, a shortcut. Mm -hmm. And it was, I the, the antenna would turn on, it would turn bright yellow from black to bright yellow, and then it would zoop me straight back onto the road. And I'm like, what is up? And so I started purposely trying to veer off the road, and every time I did that, it would just set me straight. Mm. Um, so if you have anybody that you know who is not quite as good as Mario Kart, because I mean like <laughs> Rainbow Road is is the number one level for dying by falling off the edge. Yeah. So if you have somebody who's afraid of Rainbow Road, just tell them to slap that antenna and they'll be fine. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't um, know that. So I, I unlocked as, as much as I could on it. I don't think I'm done yet, but I've done all of the uh, the cups and I, I got the end credits now that I know that that's a thing. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, let's see, let's work backwards from that. I think I uh, played some more Smash, played some more Far Cry 5, but I talked about that on my um, mm -hmm. uh, my little solo thing that I did there last week. So yes. if you want to talk more about Smash, I'm down, but otherwise, uh, that's really it for me. Okay, cool. Um, so I have been playing Smash. I finally unlocked all the characters and everything. But I did that. Uh, I did that a few weeks ago, probably like, um, I think the... Before the last podcast that we did, before the winter break, basically. Yeah, I remember um, that you brought it up, uh, but I wasn't there for that one, so we couldn't really get into it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did that. Um, I've done. A, I've played a lot of games. Um, 
I actually played through and beat your game, Tomb Raider. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. The Shadow? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I played, yeah I've been I, seeing uh, a lot of people have been playing that on the Xbox. What, did you play it on the PlayStation or the Xbox? I played on the Xbox. I'm going right. to be honest with you, though. I, I was not super impressed with the game. Ow, my feelings. <laughs> it's not, I, mean, I mean, have you beat it and played through it or no 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 yet. i'm waiting for it to go on like super sale because that's how i do that i think they're already there buddy but <laughs> almost man it was at, it was at the 50 mark i'm waiting to get it either at that 20 dollar mark uh with the dlc or um on what is it on game pass like i got the other one yeah yeah so i, I guess my my uh gripe with it is is it, it's obviously a good game but it's just more of the same. I don't really yeah. think there was a whole lot of innovation. That that was the gripe with everybody. And yeah. I, 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 I do not begrudge you for that. You know, I like the game for what it is, and I want more of what's there. But if somebody's saying that this game is changing the landscape for adventure games, it's not. No. It's, it's, it's just not a rehash. It's kind of like how they put out, uh, what is it, a new version of Call of Duty 4 every year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's just that, you know. Um, but I like it. I like what's there. I like the stories, and I like the fact that that it, it incorporates um, puzzle adventure, you know, gaming with a bit of uh, shooting and combat, and then a bit of the, uh, oh, what do you call that, um, uh, supernatural. Like kind of, you know, it, it starts to get kind of spooky towards the end. Uh, and I think, like, they open up pretty early with the Supernatural stuff in this one. Yeah, it is. But it's just, like, the thing about it is it's um, the puzzles weren't challenging. I wasn't mm -hmm. nothing that was particularly like, oh, man, that took me heck now, long to figure did out. Did you turn the challenge mode all the way up on the puzzles? Because yeah. there is a difficulty rating. So yeah. if, you're, if you're still saying that they're not challenging at full difficulty, then, yeah, they definitely needed to figure that one out. Because I felt that way about the first one. I felt the second one was a little bit harder, but the, the puzzles for the first one weren't. Yeah, the second one was definitely I had more um, uh, challenging puzzles in the second one than this than this last one. So, um, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I wasn't super impressed. I mean, I, it was kind of like I was because I've just borrowed it from a uh, priest. So I, I wasn't like I, I was playing through it just because I had to finish it basically because I started it. So. Yeah, you, it, and that's that's at least you committed to it. I appreciate that because <laughs> you know, like when somebody's like, "Well, I played the first few levels and I hated it," I'm like, "But you didn't even get to yeah. feel the whole game, and you did." And you know, I just I'm glad that you gave it a shot. The supernatural portion was kind of cool though. Like once I kind of got there, but then the supernatural portion kind of went away. I don't know how to explain it. You'll just kind of it just see the, the, the initial shine of it kind of wore off. Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah, because I feel like that's always been a thing with both the games. The first one when you fight the samurais, yeah, that was an issue mm -hmm. uh, at first, and then it's like, oh, they're just different enemies. Yeah. Like there's you don't really feel that fear that you first feel when you encounter you know a bunch of ghost samurais or mm -hmm. in the second game a bunch of like. Uh, I guess they're like Greek soldiers or yeah. Roman soldiers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm guessing that's what it was. It's just it isn't scary once you've killed a few of them. Then yeah. they're just enemies that you have to approach a little differently. Yeah, definitely. Um, but like I said, I mean, still obviously a good game. You know, um, it just we've I've played two of those games already, I felt like, you know. Um, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, so um, there was now, that. Uh, you oh. borrowed it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so at least you didn't have to sink any money into it. Right, exactly. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, so that's that's how I would tell people to try these games that they're not really 100% in. If you can just borrow it, go for it. I'm I believe putting, in the borrowing gamer culture. Yeah, I ain't putting a dollar towards that game. I'm just letting you know. That's all right, man. That is all right. You played it. <laughs> but um, then, so I played that. Um, I started playing Detroit New Human, oh, which cool. was is about as good as I thought it was going to be, which is good. You know, um, it's a really good game. Definitely something that, um, you know, it's like a... For me, it's kind of a one-shot deal. I mean, I obviously, um, you know, you can play it again to make different decisions and stuff like that. But I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't really do that with these kind of games. I just kind of go with my decision, and that's it. So yeah, it's it's rare for me to run through um, games. Like for example, well, no, because I want to do it again. But um, with The Witcher, mm -hmm. I don't think I'd want to run that through because I feel like I got the ending that I was working towards. And for me to play it again, I would have to be trying to do something else. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so I played that, uh, let's see, been playing Destiny a little bit, and we've got some fantastic Destiny news coming yeah, up, Yeah, a, a lot of people who I've been talking to who are on the Destiny, you know, hype are really excited about yeah. what, what has been going on. Yeah. Um, and then also I have played, I don't know if you've got a chance to check it out, but there's a Resident Evil 2 remake demo up. Oh, yeah, no, I saw it, but I haven't played it yet. Yeah, so, um, I played yeah, it I was played actually having a conversation with Jordan about that. Yeah, I played through it twice. Uh, oh, wow, you liked it that much? 
Yeah, because well, it's a one shot demo too, mm-hmm. so um, you only get thirty minutes and that's it. Um, I played through it on only the... thirty minutes. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> what? Thirty, 30 minutes, minutes is pretty good for a demo, man. Oh, uh, you're wild, and everybody was like, "Man, it's so short." Everybody online was like, "It's so short." I want to play okay, like well, it goes. I haven't super really played fast. a demo in a long time, but I'm used to playing demos where they're like ten to fifteen minutes. Yeah. It's basically just so that you can get a feel for what the controls are in a bit of combat. Yeah, no, it's, yeah. Um, so it was, I was, uh, I liked it a lot. I mean, there were some things with um, the visuals on it where I'm kind of like, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's like, it looks good, but it's like there's something that's missing. I don't know what it is or something there that I'm not like 100% like, oh, this is solid. But the uh, controls were fluid. Everything was fluid, smooth, really good. So I'm definitely getting that. Sure. Okay, yeah, and that's what we talked about. Jordan asked, you know, did you were you planning on getting it? And I'm like, well, I I like the Resident Evil games. I've played all of them except for the for seven. I didn't get to play Biohazard, but um, I I don't see why I shouldn't play it. I'm just kind of like it's not on the top of my list, especially because Kingdom Hearts is coming. Uh-huh. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so I think I will get around to it eventually, but it'll be like it is with most games with me. It'll just be like six months later. Yeah. I'm definitely gonna get it day one just because I'm I'm excited to play it. That's something I'm that's waiting, good. That's good. Game I'm waiting for for sure. I've been waiting for so. Yeah, um, and I think that is pretty much it for what I've been playing. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, it's it sounds like you you got some decent solid gaming in. Oh, I also got uh, I also um, finished uh, the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. You know, I was actually just thinking about picking that up, but I went with Mario Kart instead because I'm trying to focus on multiplayer games for the Switch. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's it's I I I'm I'm glad that you finished that. I was going to ask you how you were doing on it because mm-hmm. I wasn't sure if the uh, the hype had worn off or if it was like a, a game you wanted to stick through with. I mean, it's at the end of the day, it's a Pokemon game, so it's super fun. I, I like you know trying to collect them and doing the battle. The battles got harder towards the end, which is really good. And um, you know, I couldn't stop till I caught Mewtwo. So. <laughs> that's true. That's really that's the real end of the game is when yeah. you catch me too. And then what's um, cool in this in this um in something they added that's new is there's like master trainers now that you can fight. Yeah, so, I heard about that. Yeah, so there So tell me about master trainers. Yeah, so the master trainer is like there's a master Pikachu trainer. And what? yeah, so you'll go fight that Pikachu trainer and all that trainer's using is Pikachu and you're uh-huh. using your Pikachu and you fight um one on one, you know, against it's to see who wins. Oh. And then basically you get the title of Master Pikachu Trainer now. Isn't that cool? Okay, so is it just a one one v one battle? No That's extra it. Pokemon. It's That's just it. Your Pikachu, my Pikachu, Pikachu, Pikachu. Yeah, it's a one v one battle. No items, no power ups, no nothing. It's just straight up fight. And then what's cool is you use that. So now let's say I, I beat the Master Trainer Pikachu. So now I'm I can use that title when I go online to battle and stuff like that. So interesting. Mm-hmm. And they have it okay. for all the Pokemon. And wait, they have a, a master trainer for all the Pokemon? Yeah, I think except like Mewtwo and stuff. And Yeah, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, that's holy crap, dude. That mm-hmm. sounds really cool. So that definitely adds some longevity to a game that can already become long if you're dedicated to 100%ing it. Right, exactly. So, And it's, it's pretty cool that you can be like, all right, I'm going to try to get all these titles. You know, if you really want to sink your teeth into it, um, you know, then you could do that. So, so uh, do you feel like this game gives hope for uh, future RPG titles on the Switch yes. uh, for Pokemon? Mm-hmm. I'm very excited that's... for their – because what's crazy is they are, they're saying like this, Let's Go Pikachu is not their main Pokemon title. Yeah, um, that's exactly what I heard too. So I'm excited to see what their main Pokemon title is because this felt like a Pokemon title when I played it. You know, The only difference well, is – It technically the... was. It was just a reskinned one with uh, with some new bits and bobs. Right, yeah. But it's like – and so that's why I'm saying that's why it's confusing to me like why they didn't – why they made this – like they marketed this wrong. It made it seem like it wasn't a Pokemon RPG, which it, it is. So For real, it did because when I first heard about this game and then as they revealed more information about it, it seemed like it mm-hmm. was like – a, a switch version of pokemon go yeah like that's, so I was like, that's what yeah. i thought i was going to be hitting because i was like oh are you are you going to be able to you know uh fight a uh, battle like it doesn't like it's not explaining this or you know correctly so yeah it was but it's it's a good game if you like pokemon you'll love the game so that's good okay so i definitely want to pick it up i'm just still torn i mean i i want to relive the the, the yellow mm-hmm. you know game but mm-hmm. i feel like it'd be more fun to have eevee but it i guess you can't evolve eevee so what does that matter unless you're really into eevee pikachu is probably the better go-to yeah i would get pikachu just because you can get an eevee and evolve it to whichever one you want 
And yeah, and that's what I want to do. Yeah, so that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, um, that's what I've been playing. So that's sweet, man. Hey, yo. You are listening to Ether Gamer. A crap ton of stuff to talk about. Yeah, we have been sitting on roundtable topics for what a month yeah. now. Oh uh, yeah, and I and I know it's gonna be Eden Priest stuff because he's just sitting right here and he can't Mama even. Mama mia! Can't, <laughs> can't even use his voice. <laughs> oh man, but um, so I guess like where do you want to begin? I, I don't even know. Um, chronologically, I guess if you can. Otherwise, whatever's important to you. I, I feel like the the, the ones that are, you're most passionate about, we should talk the most about, anyways. Destiny. Let's start there. Destiny. <laughs> All right. So, I mean, this is a scolding hot take. This is brand spanking new, also hot off the press, too funky for itself. Damn. News. Activision and Bungie are going their separate ways. Hopefully it was an amicable breakup. Uh, I, it, it sounds like it was. Um, basically, from what I've gathered without fact-checking, um, is that Activision was just unhappy with the earnings that Bungie was making, and then Bungie was unhappy with the uh, the timing and the what they how they made them split things up and um, as far Game as content. Direction. Yeah, and doing the whole yearly thing and so on and so forth. So they just looked at each other, and they were like, Hey, you're ugly. And he's like, yeah, well, you're ugly. And then they just broke up, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hey, this isn't working out for either of us. Let's not make this be an ugly thing. Exactly. So this, to me, as a Destiny fan, you know, um, obviously not as diehard as Priest, but still a a very, very big fan of Destiny, which is why I didn't play it and then played it, didn't play it. Anyway, um, I'm excited because I think now, and oh, oh, the most important part of the split up is that Bungie gets to keep all the rights to Destiny. Yeah, in the divorce, Bungie got the good bits. Wow, which is which is kind of wild. Like that shows you how much Activision was like, "No, nah, I'm done with this. I just can't fool with this anymore." Well, I think it's because they just lost hope for it because they 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 didn't see them turning into like a, a different World of Warcraft because that's what they were going for. Right. But they didn't give it the 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 time to develop. I feel like World of Warcraft is what it is because it's had such a long history. And it's had so much time to to reiterate itself into the versions that that people love that Destiny didn't get that. Destiny 1 was where all of the love was. And when they went to 2, it wasn't fully baked. It wasn't fully cooked. So instead of just continuing to release expansions like all of the other online games have done uh, to to increase longevity and figure out what the people want, they just kind of went with what Activision slash Blizzard was pushing them to do because they needed to get those numbers up. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's it's very very interesting um, because now I, I mean, I, I'm I, is a lot of brings up a lot of questions. Like to me, one of the questions is, okay, well, does Bungie even have enough cachet and um, you know finances and stuff to just keep going? Like how you know how is all that? Because obviously they were in a partnership with Activision. Activision was funding, you know. Um, some stuff I'm assuming. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like, is Bungie even going to be able to really get it popping like they want to? Um, or are they going to have to get under, you know, another deal with with somebody else or something like that? Or can they just independent, independently do it, you know? Um, well, I, I see a few roads up ahead uh, for Bungie. Mm-hmm. Bungie could go back with uh, Microsoft. Which I don't really know. Wild. Yeah, I don't know how things ended for them, but if they get back together again, this would definitely flip the script. It would even give us a chance at a possibly reworked Halo if three four three is willing to give up that property. But I don't really know what's going on with that. That would be, I think. But you know what's funny is I could, I'm not not about the Halo bit, but I could see Phil pulling that off. 
somehow. Yeah, just being like, hey, you know, you're you're free floating, you're a free agent. It's hard out there in the wild. It's real (laughs) cold. Why don't you come inside over here? Everything's green. Oh man, Uh, feel feel be like, look at all these studios we got now. Come on, (laughs) straight up, like it's it's, they're just collecting (laughs) studios. That's the thing is that they're they're banking on a bunch of studios to produce enough hits for them to get that boost. That's what it is. Watch, you're gonna be. It's gonna be E3, and you're gonna hear. Oh, they think say, so? Yeah, well, actually, they already announced it. <laughs> that would be uh, wild <laughs> by by that weird weak intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I'm just saying um, it'd just be funny. <laughs> yeah, that know. would be pretty yeah. funny if, if that was the next thing. That was the next step. That over the course of the next six months, they figured out how to pull together a new Halo thing. No, um, I, I don't but, see that happening. I'm just saying, like Jim, just just using that sound, you know, that that song to introduce Bungie as one of their studios. You know what I mean? Again, oh yeah, it's it's just kind of like, like this yeah. was where it came from. This yeah, was the originator. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's that path. Mm-hmm. Then there's also the path of the indie developer. You know, mm. they could they could like you said, you don't know if they have enough cachet, but they could you know crowdsource it. They could uh, you know, there's yeah. a bunch of different ways that you, that you can do things now where you don't need a, a big brother or you know an overlord mm. to push you forward. The um, <laughs> but yes, that's right. The the dark road, the mm. one to the 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 the. E-A the dark path. sports. It's in the game. Right. The dog lord. It's in Bungie. Uh, they uh, they could decide to throw some cash Bungie's way, but oh with all of the God. hooks attached to it, they'd be like, "Watch this. We have Anthem and Destiny." Fuck <laughs> me, dude. I don't know if they could. I uh, would you think that they would just kind of swallow oh, Destiny oh, into dude. Anthem by that point? They would say, "You want to be a guardian javelin? <laughs> you can do it." <laughs> Oh man, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to be very interesting to see because obviously a Destiny 3 is coming. Um yes. I, I it's already been in the works. It's just now how is it going to come, you know? Pause. How is it going to make itself, you know? Like what what funding, you know, what which ways Bun- Bungie going to go? That's the thing. So, it's going to be interesting to see. Very well, I think- very interesting. I think that what they're going to focus on right now is making amends for all the stuff they had to do while they were working oh, for Activision. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely the first step. I mean, I was just talking to Priest about that offline uh, oh, today, actually, because I was like, you know, I didn't because that last DLC, whatever, it was trash. The black, whatever, Armory Forge, just funk, just pure stank. I was like, yeah, no, you not. for as long as we've known each other, you have had a troubled relationship <laughs> with destiny. Yeah. <laughs> so but I was like, you know, I was I asked him because he's been just grinding it out. He's he's already a 650, which is the highest. Light level. <laughs> <laughs> he's already a 650, which is the highest, you know, uh, level you could be. So. You know, I was like, have they changed anything yet, you know, or anything like that? He's like, no, I don't think they changed anything yet, but it's it's definitely coming. That's going to be something that they're going to be doing. I wonder if they're going to be like, yo, um, for the people who paid for the annual pass, you know, maybe you get this special weapon and then we're going to release the content for free for everybody so everybody can play. Because that would be like one way to be like, yo, we're Bungie. This is how we're doing it. We want you guys to play our game and we want you to be hyped for Destiny 3. You know, so giving away the content that they originally had paid for or had, you know, a dollar amount on for free would be a way to do that. And like giving the people, I mean, either way, the people who paid for it, like myself, it's going to kind of suck. Because it's yeah, like, dang, you we guys paid are gonna for that. get bit for doing it the right way. But maybe the they'll there. right. But maybe they'll give us like a you know a a, a, a suit you know so you get a, a helmet, a cow, a arms you know a cowl or whatever or what you know they give us something or or they give us an exotic you know like maybe they give us like three exotic Ingrams that can turn into something that you know we don't have already you know something to make it just feel a little better you know. Um, well, but, I guess they, they could go that way, but the problem is, is that it gets dangerously too close to the free-to-play model, which only works if it's supported by a good pay-to-win system. But here's the thing. One, they still have their microtransactions that Destiny hardcore people eat up. You know, that, uh-huh. that, that, that'll stay. Um, the second thing is, why not do that now? Why not take a hit now so you can make the hit for the next game? You know what I mean? Like I mean, wanna... yeah, that's that's true. It's I I don't really have any any horses in the race here, so I can't speak too much on behalf of the game. But it just from the outside in, I just the last game that I I was looking at that went free to play was um, 
uh, for Honor. And I mean, that one still hasn't made very many waves. You know, they're trying to kind of swap it up. Yeah, I don't I mean, I don't think they're going to make it free to play. You know what I mean? Like I said, you're still going to have your microtransaction. You still if you don't have the Forsaken DLC, you're still going to have to buy, you know, the thirty dollar whatever upgrade or whatever. But just the I'm talking about the annual pass stuff that they just recently released, you know, uh, for the year. Was it three? I think uh, or year two or three of Destiny 2. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I misunderstood what you meant. So basically it's just like it's a season pass, but for the year. Content, yeah. So just giving that content out for free now and then giving the people who paid the 75 or $60 like I did for the annual pass something so that, you know, just to be like, hey, sorry, you paid for this, but here you go. We still want you to play. Yeah, that would be an interesting step to take. I don't know if it's it's the smartest, but I could see how how that would definitely bring some people in because exactly. I mean that would get me to play it. Oh, and that's and that's what I'm saying. That's all you need is to get people to play it so they're hooked. And then like because imagine it like this: you pay thirty bucks and you get all the content now for Destiny Two, right? Sure. You're gonna tell me you're not gonna be and and if you actually spend time and like playing the game and have a good time playing it, you're gonna tell me you're not gonna be excited when you see a Destiny Three trailer drop at you know you know microsoft's e3 and 20 you know 2019 or you know whatever like it's gonna get people to play and it's gonna get people to pick up the next game i think well how long has it been since uh destiny 2 came out because that kind of timeline versus when 3 is going to come out is how you can really tell what kind of move they're planning on making well 3 is gonna 3 is coming 2020 i'll tell you that right now yeah 3 is gonna come 2020 because that's their cycle they do every three years 2014 Mm -hmm. then 27 uh yeah 2017 destiny 2 came out yeah so on and so forth so you think that this uh this split might might delay it a bit no i don't think so i think it'll actually honestly i think it would speed it up because they they have less to like sit there and be like hey activision master lord can you look this over and see you know they don't got to do that now they get to do what they want only reason that i would wonder if that would slow them down is because you know this is now they're they're not on a a for sure ride anymore now it's they really do have to kind of like be careful with the the next release because if they screw this one up kind of like they did with the this uh destiny 2 that could be it for them right but that could be it for the destiny franchise which right. would suck. But that's not going to stop the content of creators from writing the story. That's not going to stop. Um, they already have the game engine and stuff getting to crack in, I'm sure. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. they probably already had that going before this split. So that's not going to stop them from still putting it all together in that way. You know, I don't think. Obviously, yeah, that might slow them up as far as finances, as far as producing everything. But I don't, I don't think it'll yeah, – I don't think so. I think, if anything, it would speed it up, so – Interesting. All right. Well, then we'll just we'll have to see where, where that leads, because I I'm I've always been a cautious person. So sometimes I kind of like put that on other people, too. And that's how I would approach a situation like that. That's a bit more uncertain. Yeah. But mm-hmm. you're right. I mean, it's, it, if people are creating uh, stuff for this already, if it's, it's if it's on the peripheral and they already kind of have the uh, the. The, the roadmap to where they need to be, the the release from the, the, the shackles of servitude to Activision might actually make it a lot of, of a smoother transition for them. The shackles of servitude. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, I mean, I just I just don't see that, um, you know, being a huge issue uh, for them, especially because, man, I know it's, it's kind of like what Priest has been saying with Anthem. They got to put their whole foot into the Oh, and then also uh, breaking news from Priest. All right. Bungie got a million billion a hundred million dollars to from a Japanese developer to to make the next game. So there you go. Whoa. Okay. So it, it <clears throat> seems like they've got the propulsion they oh, need. Oh yeah. To so get so that out. so that right there, just that piece of news is telling me that one, they're probably just gonna do it themselves and they're gonna put yeah. it out themselves. You know. Um, you know, obviously I'm sure that Japanese developer is taking some bit a portion of Yeah, there's you know, there's gotta percentage be some sort whatever, of weird uh the Faustian split. demon bargain that they're gonna have exactly. to, to deal with. But yeah. For now it seems pretty good. Yeah, so I mean that's I mean that's a no brainer to stay by yourself, get it done and do it your way. You know what I mean? So that's that's pretty cool. Um and with that being said, it's it's like going back to what I was just saying, it's like Priest has been saying for Anthem, like they have to do a good job. They have yes, to give yes, they everybody what they want, you know, what they've wanted. They better bring the stranger back. I want to know about this darkness. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> everything. Yeah, because um, I've just been sitting back here like judging the whole time. But <laughs> I, that's that's how I see it. You know, I yeah. have such low uh, expectations <clears throat> for any game produced by EA. Yeah, that yeah. if they don't get this right, 
they're going to be the ones sinking their own ship. Like they, exactly. they drilled too many holes in that ship trying to get just enough water in there. Yeah. But yeah, yeah now they're going to sink, man. So, I mean, yeah, it, they've, they've got to do this right. That's just the bottom line. And I think they will. It's, you know, it's Bungie. I mean, look at Halo 1 through 3. It's beast mode. Um, oh, it's actually a Chinese gaming company called NetEase. Looks I was like. going to say, is it Tencent? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a $100 million investment from Chinese gaming company NetEase. Um, it says, on Friday, Halo and Destiny Studio Bungie announced a major partnership with Chinese tech and gaming company NetEase. To help us explore new directions, the deal is to the tune of $100 million, giving NetEase a minority stake in Bungie, which is crazy because who would have thought Bungie was even worth that much to, for that to be a minority stake? Anyway, as well as a seat on its board of directors. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, the partnership... So board, they, have, they definitely have somebody tipping the scales in a direction different than what they want. Exactly. The partnership will help Bungie grow into a global multi-franchise entertainment studio. Um, according to NetEase CEO William Ding, Bungie CEO... Mobile gaming. <laughs> Bungie, yeah. <laughs> They're going to be like, uh, you could fly and, your ship from Destiny in this. Well, that's that's what usually that means, especially because mobile gaming is so big inside of China that I think that that's what they might get pushed to, to do. Hey, that's okay as long as we get a Destiny three. That's dope. I'll play it. Okay, okay. What, you know what uh, will you will you still be okay if they manage to slide a battle royale in there as well too? You know what? I just I don't know if a battle royale would fit the Destiny um, universe. I, I mean, just with like the superpowers and all of that, I don't know if that would fit. Um, they would have to do a major game direction change for them to fit in a battle royale. They would have to do something like 343 Industries is doing with Halo Infinite to make it like, oh, Destiny 3 is going to be on this grand scale where it's like really like, wow, you know, you drop it a place and you just explore this whole place and do all the, you know, it'd have to really go 100% World of Warcraft status for them to then add a battle royale. I mean, that would just be a lot. I don't think that would be something that they would do just because it wouldn't work right now. Well, it. you mentioned uh, uh, Halo Infinite there. Have you gotten some information as to, like, what direction they're going to take it? Because I haven't really heard anything about it. Large and vast. That's about yeah, all I've that's got. that's it? Yeah, large and vast. Interesting. And it's, Interesting it's still going to be in the same storyline, but it's something that's going to be... It's going to be a completely get different game direction for Halo. Um, oh, weird. So, okay. Yeah, at least that's what it seems like, what I've read and heard. I feel like they cliffhangered us with the story in the fifth one, so unless they just want to do away with that, they're going to have to kind of somewhat stay relevant to that. But, you know, what they did with the fifth one is they introduced a whole new species and all of this and that, you know, mm -hmm. as far as the, uh, the, I forgot what their names were, but the aliens that had the the superpowers, basically. The the laser aliens? Yeah, the laser aliens and stuff. Uh, so, the forerunners. Yeah, the forerunners. Uh, so, yeah. That's something that's always been kind of, it, it's like Naruto, you know, hearing about the Sage of Six Path, and then they bring them in. The, you know, that's something in the Halo that's always been like, oh, the Forerunners built this. This is Forerunner technology. So, yeah, because that was, that was the big boogeyman. That was exactly. the, uh, the, the thing in the closet that everybody was dealing with, uh, both the Covenant and the, the, the humans. Exactly. Uh, were the Forerunners, but when they released the Forerunners, they're like, whoa, these are just like laser robot aliens from the past what yeah and so but now you know you, you you'll probably do something with the uh, 55 year old master chief you know what i mean he'll have back pain but he'll get through it um, <laughs> that's right and uh you know you'll probably be doing something on a large scale on you know forerunner land or something like that so who knows but well what's interesting to me just since we're on on this right now is mm -hmm. that i i have the graphic novel for halo mm -hmm. and in in uh, the comics, they expanded the world a lot more by adding more of the the political aspects to the actual uh, world, and also um, what was happening uh, with uh, the Covenant in terms of like their lives and how they acted. They kind of had like a like a samurai style. Uh, Brooke, uh, you're culture. a little you're you're a little late to the game, pimp. I've read about seven Halo books, and I own. Well, I no, no, no. I'm not talking about the books. I read the books as well too. I've read two of the books, uh, but I'm talking about the actual graphic novel. Where it was more artistically oriented yeah, than the, actually the, like yeah, more the, on the story. Dude, the books have uh, expanded the world exponentially. I mean, they've the books have put it put the put the whole uh, Halo universe in a whole nother. That's how I became such a diehard Halo fan. Is well, it looks like I am behind and got to do some reading. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Trust me. Yeah, because the thing is that I started reading the Halo books as they were coming out, and then it kind of fell off because I picked up other series to read, but. 
Um, I've always been a fan of those. It's yeah. just uh, the, I mean, they, the they, way that they explain everything and how Master Chief's armor works and what his training was like before he became part of the mm-hmm. Spartan program when he was just a kid. Yeah, no, I mean, it's all, yeah, they talk about multiple Spartans. They talk about the Covenant's upbringing, how, how even like the, uh, I forgot how to pronounce her name correctly, but the Sanghali, the elites, how yeah. they even became a part of the Covenant, how the Grunts became a part. I mean, there's a whole, it's... You could really, really sink your teeth into the Halo universe if you want to get into the books, but which is cool because they're they're creating a a new fictional universe to establish more games in, which is you know that's that's why Star Wars have, has been so powerful. The movies may not be doing great, but the books and video games always do. And that's the thing. Hopefully, with Halo Infinite, they can tap into some of that, you know. Um, but we'll see. I mean, definitely, um, we'll we'll see how it goes. So, um, on the. Uh, topic of xbox you want to get into the xbox uh excuse me news yeah xbox news man i mean it, it seems like as soon as uh, uh the year rolled over more leaks started coming our way because it was pretty quiet around the christmas times well let's uh you go ahead and tell the viewers about the leaks and what we got well uh to be honest i don't have the leak information in front of me so uh do you just want to spitball what's out there yeah but yeah we'll just do that yeah um, um or go ahead go you ahead go you first. go ahead you go ahead Okay, well, um, what was it? They uh, they talk about the Anaconda, right? That's going to be like their super system. Mm-hmm. My Anaconda yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, that's sorry. it's uh, as always. They give all of their pre consoles super sweet names, um, but uh, that's not what we're gonna see it as. But well, it seems like they're. That's my thing. Like what was that? What happened to the Scarlet? That's my thing. Yeah, that's the thing is that um, that was probably going to be a thing until they figured out that people are more excited for high-powered systems because it seems like they, they made their mess investment back on the Xbox One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even bothered to start talking about a new system. But what I hear that's being floated around a lot is like 240 what frames per second at yep. 4K. Mm-hmm. And yep. I don't know of a system that's doing that reliably right now so they must be working on some like future magic shit or something <laughs> <laughs> uh it's a uh, it's the power of the cloud man that's it's all it's exactly what uh, you've been waiting for <laughs> i feel like whenever anybody says those words it's like the equivalent of like hoodoo or magic words it but doesn't mean anything but you've been using those words <laughs> since you've been on the show no you should I understand think, what, i don't think a the single time the, the word power of the cloud yes, has come has. out of my mouth yes it has go back um, what i've been saying is, is that I got the cloud footages. gaming technology is the future that's, that's different yeah see we can bring up the footages now oh <laughs> show me the footages <laughs> yeah get the footages out but anyway um yeah but i mean that's also supposed to be what the ps5 is supposed to be doing something like that i think it's 240 yeah, and and frames per they're second. both uh they're both being powered by amd chipsets which i don't mm-hmm. know if you've been paying attention to the computer gaming uh so recently much. but they uh they just came out with a new card that is like 300 dollars less than the one that nvidia just put out for their rtx series mm-hmm. and it's causing all sorts of waves so i'm thinking that they actually are heading in that direction but mm-hmm. i don't know how stable that's going to be like the first gen Anaconda might just like be catching on fire, like actually catching on fire. Because <laughs> my Xbox One gets pretty hot. Sometimes like I'll go and touch it when it's in sleep mode, and I'll be like, "Oh, that's a little heater." Yeah, but they're gonna have that uh, that one cooling system. What's it? The uh, what the, the liquid vapor yeah, cooling? Yeah, the whatever. liquid vapor cooling. Yep, that's already yeah. that's already in the works. That's been in the works. So yeah, and then you know, there's there's obviously still talk of of the uh, the net box, but I think that most of the hype is going towards their most powerful system. So what was interesting, I think it was on uh, dealer, the dealer show, uh, Priest sent us, they were talking about how they pretty much had that net box, like, it's already, like, ready. <laughs> They're just kind of waiting to put it out, basically. And yeah, it's, they, and, they and, 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 were ready for it. Yeah, and it might not even be something that, I mean, it's obviously going to fall within the Xbox family, but I think that's why Phil's been using that you know, uh, uh, phraseology of, of the family of, of systems and whatnot, because it's not, it might not be something that's like, oh, this is, um, you know, the next generation Xbox, but it's obviously going to be just as powerful as the Xbox One X, if not more powerful, but it's, you know, going to be significantly cheaper. They're using a technology that, um, I forgot how, exactly how they explained it, but they explained it perfectly on the dealer show, um, where it's a little bit of hardware to do like the, the, uh, the inputs and stuff like that, and then the power of the cloud uh, for the it's graphics just that and everything else. Hoodoo word. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's 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 going to be interesting to see what Xbox is going to do. 
because they have a whole bunch of information just floating out there that it's like a whole bunch of like, what? How are they going to do? But you know I, mean, I mean, some of the, the, the speculations say that it's even gearing up for VR. And I mm -hmm. mean, is, is this going to be the generation where they're going to stick their foot out again like they did with the Connect? And obviously, like, the Connect did not do well. So well, like, I don't, what's I don't going think, on with that? I think they've learned their lesson as far as packaging something that it's like oh this is you know it's coming with the next xbox no it's going to be yeah. something along the lines of like how playstation vr handled theirs you know this uh generation as far yeah, as releasing you add a this separate, to the other thing exactly like the capabilities will be within the box uh but it won't be something that comes with it i just don't I don't see that happening. And the people who, you know, are in the industry don't see that happening either as far as that goes. So yeah, but um, now, oh, go um, who did they invest money in? Would you, off the top of your head, would you happen to know? Because I think it's, is it HTC that uh, is working with, the uh, Oculus with Microsoft? People. Yeah, the Oculus, I think. Oh, Oculus, okay. Yeah, whatever. I think it's, I don't know if that's HTC is the company behind that or not. No, uh, Vive is the, the HTC company. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. So I think yeah, it's so the Oculus I think they're standalone, so it, it probably is Oculus. Yeah, I believe so. So, um, And HTC, they're, they're doing stuff with the phones. Stuff, releasing yes. that uh, those headsets with the phones like the Samsungs and all of that uh, fun stuff. So, um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm just it's like there's so much information out there and I really don't have it all like uh, mapped out right now. I know well, the problem is probably, also verifying it because the thing yeah. is that some of these numbers just don't look like they're real. But that's the thing. Like one thing that you got to understand, I feel like you always have a closed mind when it comes to this kind of stuff. It's <laughs> such just, a closed, this, safe yeah. mind. Yeah, it's this is um this is the this is a different type of time, you know. We can't go off of old logistics and 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 old um um practices and moves and stuff. People are trying to make people are trying to secure the bag. <laughs> okay? So, they're trying to do new stuff. They're like, "We're going to do this," you know. Now, it doesn't mean like you said uh our anaconda is not going to catch on <laughs> like like flaming anaconda oh, yeah. so, fire but, uh, anaconda but but i mean look at the xbox 360 when they first released it everybody's getting red rings of death i mean it's yep. trial and error with this kind of stuff but it, you, we can't we can't um look at old uh practices and and old ways of how things went like for instance you know playstation just coming just getting out of the e3 because they're just going to be doing their own stuff like everything's changing this this uh gaming industry is moving quick and it's and it's it's evolving very quickly. So, as far as 240 frames per second on a console, I I could see it happening. It doesn't mean that it's going to be like you said the most stable or reliable 100% of the time. It doesn't mean that every single game is going to be running at 240. But you know you know you know those flagship games like both uh, Gran Turismo and and Forza are probably going to be those you know games are gonna be running at that frames per second and stuff like yeah, that. yeah i guess you had to frame it like that because i was thinking about like like your standard games that you pick up and i'm like there's no way those guys can run at 240 I'm, but yeah i mean jimmy yeah, garoppolo is not gonna be yeah. throwing a football at 240 frames frames per second on madden <laughs> you know what i mean it's just not gonna happen yeah because they that. they those, those those games are produced every, every year so they can't put that much heat into a game they might Put a little bit more sauce in it, but definitely not full 240. But that's 4K. the thing, though. We'll definitely be getting 60 frames per second. That's going to be. Oh, like yeah. A, and I guess it, that's if gonna be you like overshoot, jogging. you'll at yeah. least get the median. Exactly. <laughs> that's going to be jogging for these systems from what yeah. it sounds like. So, um, you know, we, we can't uh, speculate off of old stuff and we just got to be ready because there's going to be. I mean, right now, PlayStation and, and Microsoft, Sony and Microsoft, they're, they're going for it this year. It's what it seems like, you know. Um, I don't think Sony took very kindly to uh, Microsoft's uh, marketing, you know, over the past year with the Xbox One X being the most powerful console and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, it, well, it wasn't false marketing. It really is the most powerful. No, console. yeah, for sure. Definitely. But but then, and then like I've... you got another thing, too, is with Microsoft They're like I almost feel like they don't even care about Sony right now. They're like, how do oh, we compete no, with they the are, PCs? They are living the mic hype. Yeah, they're like, how do we compete with PCs now? They're in their mind. Actually, yes, you're absolutely yeah, you know right. Saying? It seems like they're they're working more towards they're punching up. They're not punching sideways. Yeah, or even like at an angle. Right. They're like, uh, we've in in their mind, they're like, we've crushed Sony, so we're gonna keep going. even though like I mean, there's plenty of arguments as such as uh, you know first party titles and and just the quality of games coming out of uh, you know both Microsoft and Sony. I mean, there's. Sony obviously wins that race, and so at the end of the day, it depends on what kind of gamer you are. You know, if you're, well, you know, hardcore, you're going to have both, you know. Um, if you just like, 
really good games, you're going to have a PlayStation. If you want kind of uh, something that's the jack of all trades, you're going to have a, an Xbox, you know? So, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Xbox handles everything else that's, that's games really well. I feel like um, whenever I go downstairs and use the PlayStation uh, that my roommate has, I just, it doesn't, uh, it, it feels like it doesn't fill the roles like like the, the the Xboxes. They really did a good job with the um the intuitive uh, UI and the way that you you kind of scroll through everything. Um, the uh, the like even just switching signing in and out is so easy on the Xbox compared to switching out in the PlayStation UI. That's funny because I feel the exact opposite. To me, yeah. the, you know, it could be just preference on how yeah, long yeah. you've you've each used them because it's kind of like. I, I will not touch an Apple product because I just I don't know how to use any of the UI uh, little doodads and whatnot. But hand me an Android based phone and I can just do tricks with that thing. Yeah, I mean I think that's just it's all preference based at yeah. that point. But um, but uh, not to get too far away from what you were saying mm-hmm. that 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 Microsoft is punching up, but yeah. PlayStation has the overall record for sales. Like mm-hmm. I cannot yeah. refute that they they have there are more free roaming uh, PlayStation fours. <laughs> Then there are actual Xboxes, and yeah. I think that that just totals up to overall preference in gaming system yeah. versus power. But I mean, raising the cost up to to five hundred had to push the margin for the 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 Xbox sales by that much more because perceived value uh, adds um, status, you know. So yeah. sure, you have a PlayStation Pro, but I, I paid for the the full cost for. Uh, but it's basically a gaming computer, a budget gaming computer at that. <laughs> and the thing is, snobs like us, you know, uh, there, I mean, there's not many snobs like us. And uh, what I mean to say is. No, it uh, definitely is a, a smaller uh, mm-hmm. group that are, that are being catered for with systems like the Xbox One X. So, yeah. So people are going to be like, oh, I'll just pick up the PlayStation. I'm cool. I'm playing my games, you know. Um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's they the, the games are better on the PlayStation as far as first party titles go. So uh, there's there's no no competition there. But um, well, we're leading on PlayStation side now. Do you have any uh, any PlayStation Five news for us? Uh, no, I don't. But I'll tell you what, I'm excited to see what they're gonna do because they got to do something. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it <laughs> seems like uh, all of the leaks that are coming out are only making the next generation of the Xbox better. The PlayStation has been pretty quiet. Uh, I'd say since they said that we weren't going to show up, they were like, "We're not showing up to E3. Yeah. Uh, go crazy." Well, that's that's kind of their that's kind of their mojo though. I feel like that's kind of how they're gonna they do things. They operate. Nah, uh, Nintendo's mojo is being like, think what you're gonna think. <laughs> we'll show up with the stuff that we've got, and then make you wonder what we've been doing with all that money you're giving us. No, nah, that the, that's Nintendo. Uh, <laughs> what I mean by it is, is Sony's mojo is they're not gonna talk about it. They're gonna show you. They're gonna okay. They're okay. going to show you. Um, I, I believe that we will see something. This year, if sooner than later, too, honestly, um, to where it's going to knock your socks off and you're going to be like, oh, OK. All right. Well, I feel like the, the release of the information for the PlayStation comes at such a, a different frequency. Like you have to have your feelers up somewhere else than it does with the Xbox stuff, because Microsoft is so ever present in comparison to Sony here in the in the States, at least that you ha- you got to you got to be a little bit, you know, with your ear closer to the ground. Yeah, uh, well, to hear and, stuff about the PlayStation. And the other thing is, Microsoft don't care. They're like, I don't care. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now. we don't care. Even if it's false, it's all it's all dope, you know. Um, we got a little bit of PlayStation news here from Priest, um, the silent cartographer. Mamma uh, right. mia! <laughs> <laughs> the PlayStation Five release date is unlikely to be 2019, but oh, Sony, what? but Sony may have. What? Oh, I need you to slow down. Sony may have once again revealed some spectacular new 8K graphics using one of its most beloved games. Baloo! <laughs> uh, <laughs> PS5 news hounds will feel they might have heard this one before, but it looks more and more likely that Sony could be working on some form of 8K gameplay features in their upcoming PlayStation 5 console. Once again, not for the first time, it involves a play- PS4 racing exclusive Gran Turismo Sport. Um, it's, Why, so it's What is it about that game that makes people want to make such high-resolution versions of it? Uh, because it's a simulation. Yeah, they're trying to make it the most real as possible. And Gran Turismo, honestly, if you play Gran Turismo, you really got to be into cars. <laughs> because it's true. It's very true. Every time I've tried to play that yeah. game, I'm like, oh, this is so hard. Yeah. Why can't I just drift and throw a shell at somebody? <laughs> wow. Um, so yeah, um, they're you know they're they're trying to make that the racing simulation 
um, game, and and that's that's been its goal ever since it was released, and that's why they, you know, use everything on that. They put their whole foot in that game, uh, with when it comes to technology. Excuse me. So, what do you think about that? The 8K and the unlikely 2019 release. The shine of uh, of pixels of of pixel ratios aspects or not aspects. Sorry, of of the the count going up that high, I don't think that it's going to matter as much as we think. I think everybody's falling into a, um, uh, like a 4K, 8K, 16K uh, hype, race, whatever you trap, want to call it. Hype trap. Yeah, exactly. That they're, they're pushing forward in that direction, but it's been proven that there are other things that lean uh, or that, that, uh, give you better fidelity, like, um, color representation, uh, how many colors you're actually, uh, have available, um, how bright everything is, how darks your darks get, um, how your light works, like for example, that ray tracing uh, feature that the uh, Nvidia cards are working on right now. Um, all of those things are going to give you a better picture than any kind of of high resolution any kind of pixel system count. will. Yeah, yeah, because you can have all the pixels in the world, but if you're just getting, you know, uh, maybe finer details, like sharper versions of polygons, but mm-hmm. they're not. They don't have the other things that make them what they are, because it's like. Uh, anybody who who draws or does any kind of art, they understand that whenever they draw a drawing, it's more than just basic shapes and the fidelity of the lines. It's also about the way that the colors are put in and how the effects are blended to give you a sensation of an illusion of of, of what it is that you're looking at being real, at least with realistic stuff. So if they're just trying to get like the smallest amount of detail, sure, that's fine. Yeah. You'll see some hairs. That's cool. I'll see hairs <laughs> on people's faces. But yeah. um, if, 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 if you expand it, if you pull it back, and the colors are off. The lighting is off. You know, it just it it just it it doesn't. It, it's stylized in a way that that it has to make up for the fact that there's everything you can see everything, but everything is kind of meh. Then you know the it, it's gonna fall short there. Yeah. Um. I mean, for me, I'm just gonna be pissed if I have to buy another TV. So that too. I feel like we're <laughs> like everybody who can afford a 4K TV is getting one right now. Why yeah. would they push 8K towards us? Well, Even because, two years from now, because they're trying to be ahead of the game, they want to be able to. I think the the what what the new plan is going to be, um, based on the way that they're throwing this technology and these numbers and all of these things out. This is just a hot take. I haven't really. I'm just thinking about it. Yeah. Um, I think they're trying to gear up for longer generations, uh, longer cycles uh, of of having a system. So the reason why they're making it eight. So one. Um, their 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 TVs are gonna be I think it was the in that article the Z Z six nine or something like that TV is is gonna have eight K capability now that TV is obviously gonna be uh, uh gonna hurt your pockets you're gonna have to sell your house <laughs> to get sure. it but um you know it it, it the technology is down the road and I think they're trying to just be like yo we got it in there already we don't have to make another one we don't have we can focus on games we can focus on you know, where we're making our bread and butter as far as selling the console and so on and so forth. So I think it, they're, they're gearing up for longer uh, cycles, longer generation of consoles. So I think that's... Well, I, I think that um, that's, that's a good way of looking at it, but I just worry that 8K might go the way of the 3D TV. You know, it's, it's something that, that they thought everybody wanted because it was the next thing, but it's not what, what people really wanted. It's not what everybody could afford because that's really what's going to drive prices. I mean... Because here's, what, what, here's that, the other thing too, though. Um, um, you got to think about this as well. Is uh, they're probably trying to focus on VR too. I mean, it's just kind of like a thing where they're throwing everything in it, so it's ready. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Trial and error. You know. I mean, like you said, the 3D TV pe- people. Some people were into it for a little bit, um, and then it kind of fell off. But um, they're making sure they have the capability. Uh, their box is going to be able to do. Um, anything that technology is going to throw at us for the next like 10 years after it comes out. So that way they could focus on other things like, okay, stepping up their VR. Cause it looks like based on the leaked stuff that we had spoke about a few shows ago for PlayStation, they're really putting their whole foot into the PlayStation VR because they want to be ahead of the game. As soon as their VR thing is ready, they want people to look to their stuff. Like how did they do that? Oh, okay. Now we got to try to make it better, you know? So Um, I think that's going to be a very big focus for uh, Sony. And I think what they're going to be doing um, is, uh, you know, having a lot of their exclusive titles are going to have, you know, VR and stuff with it. You know, they're they're trying to push that because it's just another way for them to make extra money. 
So yeah, because um, VR still hasn't taken off, but it's by no means dead. VR is mm-hmm. in this weird limbo right now where yeah. it, you know, there was that the the first wave of VR in like what was it like the early '90s where they tried to kind of make VR happen. Well, what but, was that? A uh, Virtual Boy. <laughs> Yeah, well, Virtual Boy was kind of like a laughable version of it, but I'm talking about the ones where you had to like have them hoisted in a room that had like coolers in it and oh, stuff. Oh, right, yeah. There was mm-hmm. no way that you could hold it on your head. Mm-hmm. Like that level of VR came and went because it just didn't deliver, you know, what it promised. It wasn't user-friendly. And I feel like, yeah, it wasn't user-friendly. And I feel like this one does it better, but still isn't delivering what it promised, which is basically the ability to put on a helmet and go somewhere else. But and it's like I you feel said, like, uh, pe- it, it's like you said, it's not dead. People want it. You know, yeah, people, people still want it. it. I think that's what's propelling it, but yeah. it just isn't It isn't where it needs to be for it to be a thing. Because, I mean, most of the VR games that exist now aren't even really full games. They're just like like, uh, like more sandbox games or, right. or games that, that, that have like very small scopes of what you can do in them because obviously having to code in a constantly rendered 3D world where everything is, is based off of like real-world physics, it's, it's two very weird things that you have to m- mesh together. Yeah, so... I just like I said. I mean, they're. I think they're putting their whole thing into it. They're really trying to get it in. Um, well, I can't wait to see what what it's going to come out of that because that's the thing is that for them to stick with VR means that they believe in it. So mm-hmm. they have to be pushing something. Maybe they know of a, a slew of games that will come out for the PS5 that they haven't even announced that are going to be VR titles that will change the landscape. Here's how. Here's how I think they'll get slick with it. So they'll release like you know. Um, uh, an Uncharted game or uh, uh, the game that I like. Um, I can't think of the name right now, but the the one that you said was Tomb Raider was better than Tomb Raider. On <laughs> absolute drugs. Uh, Last uh, of Us. Last of Us. So there we go. Yeah, I think well, they'll 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 get slick because they'll release these games and then they'll have like um, kind of a, a DLC. Oh, here you can do this particular part in the mission with the in uh, in uh, uh, you know with the headset. You know what I mean? Like. You'll be able to do that part, like a part of the, the game or something. Oh, so like a, a hybrid on. gaming thing where like you're mm-hmm. playing on the screen and then it's all like, all right, put on mm-hmm. your viewing glasses. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. they like, and then they set you loose in the 3D world for a bit. Yeah. And then you're Ellie, you know, running around trying to hide. That would be an interesting concept, but don't you feel like that would detract from the experience? Because, but they still have the game though. This is just DLC. You know, they still have the game standalone making its money. Kind of like what they did with Skyrim VR, where it's like, sure, play Skyrim, but hey, you want to, you want to see what it looks like to fight a dragon, like in 3D? I, I don't. It, those dragons didn't look good. So <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, super low res dragons. But yeah. isn't that game like nearing its tenth year? What Skyrim? Uh, Skyrim, dude. Oh, that was my other thing I wanted to bring up in the round table. So we only have a few minutes left here because we've just been okay. getting and going, getting and going. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're we're really trying to lift up all the things that we haven't been able to talk about. Yeah, but there's something. Uh, so with the uh, fall. <laughs> <laughs> of fallout 76 see what i did there yeah um it uh, uh they're, they're talking about maybe releasing the next elder scrolls sooner than they had anticipated because they're like oh sorry <laughs> here's the game you know uh we we messed up because they thought that uh fallout 76 was gonna be a hit and it, they thought it was not <laughs> it. this is not yeah. what we wanted yeah, because so. it's not Fallout. That's the thing is that yeah. it's 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 a battle royale that they tried to make not a battle royale once they figured out that battle royales weren't the thing anymore. And and we as gamers did exactly what uh, we as gamers said that we were going to do. We found the nukes right away and then bombed everything, and it was just, just like, ruined the game for anybody who didn't know how to do it. Basically, like dope. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, but so that, but I mean, that's good news for me because I love Elder Scrolls. Skyrim is over its 10th year. Um, that's what made me think about it. Cause you're like, isn't it in its 10th year? No, it's over its 10th year. It's, yeah. It's, oh. a, I, I'm still, I cannot believe that I am playing a 10 year old game. This isn't like, well, you know, like playing like years. Mario or something. It's older than 10 years. Yeah. It's, it's older than 10, but I'm just like, whoa, what the heck? Yeah. yeah. They, they are long overdue for a new one. Yeah. So, um, that we might be seeing it sooner than we thought. So that would be tight. Just it better not be broken. Cause it's it's going to be like lovably broken. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, there's that crab going to that tree again. I don't know if that's going to fly this time, though. Just with the technology. So? Yeah, I don't think people are going to be like, oh, wow, I'm stuck in a tree again. You know, like we were with Skyrim. I don't yeah. I just don't I don't think that's going to fly this time. And I think Bethesda might know that because they were I killing just, it, them on Fallout 76. They were killing them with those glitches. 
It was, they um, were just relentless. <laughs> but that's because that was a half-baked game made by a B team. That's that's what I'm saying is this wasn't their best team working on a game. Otherwise, they wouldn't have even released it. So they would Somebody would have been like, uh, <clears throat> we're the best game makers that you have, and we can tell you that this game's going to be trash. We don't want to make it. Yeah, so, and so give it to that, somebody else. And that's what I'm saying. With that being said, I just don't think that's going to fly with a, a new um, Elder Scrolls game. They got to they gotta make sure it's – they got to put their whole foot in that one. I think definitely yeah i think they they will because they uh their bread and butter that's it elder mm-hmm. scrolls and fallout and they already threw half of that butter in the garbage <laughs> yeah so it's, it was the it was the used old butter you know that yeah you they, they picked it up they, they threw it in the garbage and they went hey it's uh it's still butter shaped it's yeah it kind of looks like butter in it but you know uh, hey yeah it's i mean obviously some, br- old some bread people will get sick it. from eating this butter but not everybody will die from eating this butter yeah exactly <laughs> so with that being said we're gonna have to call this one a wrap uh that's right next episode we'll have priest back full voice screaming at everybody telling us about how we were wrong about all of our facts we said on the show that's right <laughs> i it's i i can't imagine what kinds of faces x priest was making so yeah. you know x priest uh Mama just coming hot mia. next time <laughs> Yeah, so um, um, this has been awesome to be back on the mic. Definitely. And uh, we'll be back next week. Peace. Thanks for listening. For more information on the show, go to our website, ethergamerradio.com. You can always catch us on our Facebook fan page. You can hit us up on Twitter or our hosting site, Podbean. Hit us up on iTunes and drop us a review. It helps get the word out to other gamers, so spread the love. As always, we would love to hear from you. Hit us up on Ether Gamer Radio Hotline, 916-877-5745. Until next time, stay gaming. Ether Gamer Radio.